So hello, I'm Mary Doherty. I'm a consultant liaison psychiatrist and I work in King's College Hospital. And in my work, I look after people who are living with conditions like heart failure or COPD. And we're making this video today because it's been an incredibly difficult year for everyone. People have been through extraordinary things, losing people they love, losing touch with the things they like to do, losing confidence in how they live their lives and seek enjoyment and connection with people. And we're aware that it's been difficult and we're aware that it's had an impact on people's mental health and also their physical health. So what we wanted to do was just share with you some of the things that people are going through and hopefully give you some tips and ideas of how to feel a little bit more in control and things to just feel generally a bit better. My name's Carol. I felt quite closed in. Um, even though I knew that I could go out. And because I suffer with COPD, which is a breathing problem, it would have been quite bad for me to have got COVID. So obviously I take, I've taken best precautions that I thought I could take. Well, I have COPD, so it uh, can be limiting exercise wise. And also, um, I was in a coma uh, during the beginning of the pandemic, which has also um, had an effect on my health. But when I came out of the hospital, I went to my daughter's rather than rehab. And it was like waking up to an apocalypse, quite frankly. Um, hearing what had been going on and pretty much the the, the, country, well, the world had been shut down while I was asleep. So it was a bit of a shock and pretty scary, to be honest. My grandson wasn't obviously allowed to come and he could see me, but couldn't come near me. So that was awful. But fortunately, um, slowly but surely, I was getting more and more mobile and... Um, yeah, no, I, I, I slowly recovered. I spent three months with my daughter and she helped me um, increase my confidence enough. I mean, quite frankly, she'd have had me living there forever. But I, I needed to come home because I have a husband who was talking me, to me through the window for most of the time. And then when we could, we were allowed, he was able to come and stand, stand in the garden and we could talk then, um, but it was a very strange time for both of us. You've got to get out there and otherwise you'll never do it. You've got to say to yourself, I'll just go for a walk somewhere or sit in the cafe, sit outside the cafe and have a cup of tea, just have a cup of tea, just so that you can talk to people um, and get slowly back into that habit of of being able to speak to people. I think that the, the key is not setting your goals too high, you know, baby steps, as they say. If you, if you can walk 20 yards today and 30 yards tomorrow and do it like that, whatever your own capability is, you know how far you can push yourself. But remember, you've got to come back from the walk, so take it slowly and, and you get there. I mean, I'm still on the journey of getting better and um, I've had a lot of help. So as I said, I, I work with people who are living with long-term conditions and there's a number of things that they've been saying to me over the couple, last couple of months about how they're feeling. And one of the really common things is feeling anxious about going back out again, connecting with friends and, and doing the things that they used to do. And I wanted to say that that's perfectly understandable what we've been through in the last 18 months is completely outwith any of our experience before. So if you are feeling anxious, please understand that you're not alone. But people have also been saying other things to me. People are feeling frustrated. Sometimes they feel angry with themselves for not being able to do what they could do before and feeling more irritable and fed up. And again, I think these full range of emotions uh, adjusting to what our current situation is are perfectly normal. And if you are feeling that way, you're not alone and there's nothing wrong with you. 
Now, I use the word anxiety and you might wonder, what is anxiety? Anxiety is a feeling, something that we experience and a bodily response. Anxiety can be awful and you might know the feelings of anxiety. Your chest can feel really tight, your heart can pound, you can start to feel a little bit like you're not in control, your breathing might be altered. And it's a very physical response to thoughts that we're having in our head. Am I in danger? Am I under threat? And the problem with our body response is that the more that we feel that worry physically, the more our, our thoughts race and think we really are in danger. And this can feel really, really overwhelming and difficult. So the way that we in mental health support people to manage anxiety is to start to help them see the connection between those racing thoughts and their bodily sensations and give them some strategies to try and slow that down and break that connection between the two. Okay, so I'm going to give you four tips of things that patients have said to me have been helpful. Minimise your risks, share your worries with others, be kind to yourself, and try not to pay attention or think about what other people are thinking. I'm going to go through those four. So the first one, minimise your risks. Coronavirus is still around us, but we've made huge progress in this country in reducing our risk of getting sick with this disease. But we have masks, we've got good hand hygiene, and we know that reduces the risk of infection. A colleague said to me, you wouldn't get in a car without wearing a seatbelt, so I'd recommend the same thing to you. Take the appropriate easy measures to reduce your risk of infection. The next tip is talk to a friend. Tell someone how you're feeling, share your concerns. I don't know if you've ever found this, but when you're stewed up and you're worried about something and you're keeping it all to yourself, when you just offload that and share it with someone and talk it through, it immediately feels better. Be kind to yourself, take it easy. Don't think that you have to go back to doing all the things that you used to do. If you do feel a bit worried or you don't manage to complete an activity, don't worry about it, let yourself off. Give yourself a round of applause for trying. I think the key thing with anxiety is it's our critical voice in our heads that makes things even worse. So just be kind and congratulate yourself on what progress you do make. And my final tip is about not paying too much attention to people around you. Something that I'm really aware of is that people are really adjusting to going out with the symptoms that you manage day to day alongside wearing masks. Perhaps you've got mobility issues and pain as well. And it can feel really overwhelming with all of this extra kit and just, you know, paying for something at the checkout or navigating the bus. When anxiety gets bad is when you're worrying about what people around you are thinking. Trust me, they're very, very rarely thinking about you. So take your time at the checkout, take your time getting on the bus. Don't let the pressure or worry of people around you hurrying you get in your way. This is about you and your progress and nothing to do with them. So my really clear advice is block them out. And I bet if they're thinking anything, they're thinking well done for that person managing the way that you are. Many of you will have been shielding for a long time now. And that's really difficult because often that means that your body will be working a bit differently. You might find that things are a bit more difficult than they were before lockdown. So that might be simple things at home, like it being a bit more of a struggle to climb the stairs. And that's a normal adjustment of your body to having, having been doing less in this period of time. So exercise is a really important part of the recovery we're all doing in coming out of lockdown. And this doesn't mean that we're suddenly expecting people to go for five mile runs or anything, but exercise is really good for both mental and physical health. And it just means that we need to start building in little bits of activity into our day. So that might mean that you've not been walking to the shops, but now's the time to start doing that on a regular basis. And if you can do just a little bit of exercise, small and often, that then really builds up and allows the body to regain some of that strength that we've lost before. When you do start to exercise again, you might find that you feel breathless and your heart will be racing. And that can feel quite threatening and worrying, particularly when you have a lung condition and you've been breathless before and that's been a frightening experience. But it's really important to remember that those changes, that breathlessness, that heart racing, is just your body's response to needing a little more energy. And in themselves, they're not dangerous. So to some degree, you need to just tell yourself it's okay and to just push on through into that little bit of discomfort because you're working hard and you're building strength and over time you'll be able to do more. Coming out of lockdown is hard for lots of people, particularly people with health conditions. 
the most important thing is to be really kind to yourself and to take things at your own pace. So try and do a little more, try and exercise little and often, but really congratulate yourself when you are able to do things that, that were worrying to you. And if you can do a little and often, rather than try and get back to exactly how things were before, you'll find you make much better progress. And being outside in nature is, is a really enjoyable thing, particularly if you can find friends that you trust that you can meet up with. So just take it at your own pace, one day at a time, and just try and push yourself that little bit, you'll find you're, you're doing much more very soon. Okay, so we've, we've talked about quite a few things in this video, and I just wanted to summarise. We've been through an impossible year, and it's had a big impact on all of us. But things will start to get better, and we will start to adjust. We've given you some strategies of how to get on top of your physical fitness levels, and also how to get on top of anxiety if it's starting to get in the way of you doing things or feeling very unpleasant. But I also wanted to say that the health service is open. And if you feel that your anxiety is stopping you from doing things and you've tried these techniques and it really is difficult, please do let your doctor know. And exactly the same with your physical fitness levels. We are there to support you. And there's a lot more resources and information out there to help.